And so what's the rule that we have in this world? We have a rule, equal guys. Equal light, equal shadow. Bonus point. <laughs> you get a prize. Right? Yeah. Just kidding. Oh, I want a prize. Mm -hmm. I want for it. Uh, actually, I forgot to bring the prize. I could tell you the winner of the prize. It was Eric. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh. Just in case you were wondering. Yeah, you, you were the winner of the prize. I forgot, but you'll have it next class because today it was one of those days that it was all that it took for me to get my act together. There was no happy dance. <laughs> there was a happy dance, yeah. But I have to say that um, there were some close. Uh, seconds. Lucas and Jill were very close seconds on this. On this project? Um, I mean the research? The yeah. research. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so you see what I'm doing right now? I just go to see where's my light? Where's my light source? There's a little bit of light source just a little bit. I'm just doing light sources. And then I go back, make sure I remember which side is the dark. I'm gonna go and shade this. I think it would look better shaded. You like that? Keep some of the grays. And then I want to do and see where's the shadow. Now the shadow is starting. See how light that is and our shadow that is? Equal light, equal shadow. So light and very dark shadows. And that is very dynamic by starting to do it this way. This is very shadowy over here. And then over here it has some of the mid gray, but it has a little bit of the shadow. Not as strong over there. Same thing here, some over there. This big ball over here has a lot of shadows underneath over here, and a little bit of it there. And now, if I use one side of the paper snob for the dark. And also, what you notice here is that my paper stump is dirty, so I'm using it as a pencil. I'm actually using it. I don't reach, load, or put things over there. So I put that over there. I'm not touching too much these two because I like the contrast between the two of them. But I might just go back and just soften up a little bit in between over here. And you see how it starts to pop out and give it a sense of three dimension? And then you get to the underneath. What you see here is the light is casting a shadow and it has a definite shape over there. So I think I'm going to do that. I think that's going to be cool to do. So where's my dark? And so, and by actually following the shape of the cast shadow, it's going to enhance the fact that this is three-dimensional looking. And that I am going to do, not with the mid-gray, but really as a cast shadow. And now, And then there's a little bit of highlight on the top of these shapes. So I'm going to go back and just make sure that I hit. Now, this is where a Swiffer is good. Oh, there's a Swiffer in my bag. A Swiffer? Yes, in the pocket. Yeah, Swiffers are great. Yeah. So Swiffers are the best tool, especially when you are working in charcoal or things like that. So you take your Swiffer and you Swiffer. And so if you have all that excess graphite that might go everywhere, you gently swiffer it, and now you start to have a nice thing. So here we're going to look that there's a highlight in the center, and there's a gradation of light from here to here and there to there. So we're going to start with the highlight in the center. Now, one of the things that I learned a long time ago when I started to draw is if I were to draw a highlight just as a strong light, it's going to look like a cartoon. Lights and shadow gets broken up because every surface has little nooks and crannies into them. And so breaking that, as I could see it, I see the light is stronger here, here, and here, a little softer there and there and there. And that modulation gives life to a drawing. So just, just as a little tidbit. But right now I just did a line. Be and I'm gonna just soften it here and there so that it does that. And then same thing here, I know that the shape will go from here to here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blender and I'm going to blend at the source moving towards the light it's in, in that direction so that it creates a sense of movement that follows 
the movement of the shape that I'm, that I'm working on, and that also helps. And doing the same on the other side. And I just kind of deposit some of the graphite and then bring it, bring it in. This one has a little bit more shadow and on this side. And then one thing that I see all the time is that while this has a crease of a dark shadow just next to it, nice strong highlight next to it. And that always, that's nice, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, that was yummy. You know, same thing. Now this is not a highlight and shadow because technically these two kind of blend a little bit. They shouldn't stop because that's just the cast shadow. You know, so it kind of shows where that goes. What's your opinion between blending with the stump or with the fingers? My opinion is before you eat food, apples, or smoke a cigarette, <laughs> which you shouldn't do, or anything, you should wash your hands with soap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, do you feel like one type of smudging does it better than the other? Do you know what I mean? Um, well, I like using the paper stump because I like the control that I have, you know, and so I think that may just be that because I could really control where I go with it, and I also use it a bit like a drawing implement, you know. Mm -hmm. So I start doing that, and then you could, you know, here we had the shadow, so let's continue our shadow here. And I'm going to skip some of the details in there because we won't do the read thing. I'm simplifying the shape. But what I could show you is that, you know, when you have a motif that continues itself like that, you have to think about the light source, but the light source at the center will flip to the other side. Do you see what I just did? Mm -hmm. So that does that because then the light source, you know, may come from there. <coughs> From there, from there, from there, from there, and then, then starts to move. And then you could blend it, but see, I can't get in there with my fingers; they would be too big. So that's why I think the blender is a good tool for that. If I if I really wanted to just do some of that, so you know, and you could always go back with your eraser and clean a shape or adjust a shape or something like that. But let's do, let's do this ball over here. Now, I won't do it. I'm going to be drawing it, but you guys are going to tell me what to do. If I were to draw this ball, what should I go? What's the first thing I should draw? Highlight. Where? <laughs> right here. Um, I, say, I say do the left I side for the shadow. The, the right light is right in the ball over here, but you see it differently because yeah. you made a different angle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. On the but, side, it looks like it's more at the top yeah. of the ball. Then. But for her, and what she says, so she says it's over here. And what's the shape of the highlight? It's okay. Yeah, it's like that kind of. Like semi Like that kind of. Yeah. That looks good. We're happy with that. Okay, mm -hmm. so what's my next step? Adding shadow. Where? There's a little shadow here, and then it arcs. A stronger, stronger shadow, stronger shadow at, the, at the top over there. And the shadow kind of arcs. Yes. Yeah. So I'll do a shadow over there. And you said there's a shadow over there's here. There's a lesser one right there that kind of blends out. Yeah. So again, we could use the, the gray of the paper to be the blendy part. You know, that's a technical word. <laughs> Oh. oh, don't worry about it. That's why this is here. Oh. I've He's never thought of doing that before. That. That's the purpose of it. I never knew that. Oh, that's what I wonder I had charcoal for. Because a lot of people use it for texture and stuff too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have like four at home. Right? It's sandpaper. <laughs> I have like four of them at home and I never really knew what to do with them. See? Mr. Swiffer? All clean. Well, we have a little bit. I, I'm not going to spend too much energy on, on doing that. But what we want to do here is we could start blending our shadows at the base over here, some of that over there. And now we have a ball. Yeah. And that was done by light and shadow. So do you really need to know how to draw? What do you need to know? 
how to see light and shadow. You know, you, I mean, you could, yes, there's like, this is really funky because the shape is really funky. And I did that on purpose, you know, because I think it's fun to have funky shapes. But, you know, this shape over here that does that, and then this will be like shadow over there and there, and then more shadows like that. Now we get to see that, and then the highlight would be that. And I could just go on and on and on and on and on like that. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. 